What's up guys, welcome back to another iMovie tutorial. After putting out my last video covering color grading techniques, I decided I would start a small mini series covering all the topics for film editing in iMovie. So if you guys have any topics you'd like me to cover specifically, let me know in the comments down below. Whether you are a beginner or you have some experience editing an iMovie, I think everything I'll cover in this mini series can be of use to you and can help you on your way to mastering iMovie and to move on to more advanced editing techniques in programs like Final Cut and Adobe Premiere. In this video, I'll be starting at the beginning, covering the basics of iMovie and all its editing tools. So let's just get right into it. When you first open up the program, you'll be taken to sort of a main menu where you can view any media you have imported, recent projects you've been working on, and final products you've saved to the theater. By clicking on projects, you will see the current projects you are working on, as well as a button that says create new. When you click on this button, you will have the option to create a new project, either a movie or a trailer. Typically, you click on movie since trailers are loaded with presets, themes, and time limits, so you can make shots and edits with little effort and that are ready to be exported and shared in minutes. While stylistically these can be a little cheesy, sometimes they do come in handy. In either option, you will have the same tools to edit your clips, so I'm just going to create a new movie and import a clip to work with. To do this, just click the arrow in the media library and then locate the clip you want to use in your file folder. You can also import media by clicking the arrow up here, by hitting file, and then hitting import media, or by using the keys command I. You can do whichever method you prefer. Now before I get into the editing tools, I just want to point out a few things about the media library, which is basically everything to the left of the preview screen, or this line. So looking at these buttons, clicking this one will quickly show or hide your media library making the preview screen slide to the center. Inside the media library, you have the option to view the clips you're using in your current or past projects by clicking My Media and then by scrolling through the available media libraries on the left hand side. You can also hide these libraries with this button right here. And to unhide them, just click the button again. You also have other available libraries like sound libraries, title libraries, background libraries, in transition libraries. Clicking on these will bring up sound effects, music, titles, and other presets or effects provided directly by the program or related apps. There are many uses for all of these, but I will cover them in more detail in other videos. Before moving on, it's helpful to notice that you have a search bar in each of these sections to quickly locate something specific and a gear icon under My Media, which allows you to modify how small or large clips appear in your library how much you want each clip to be zoomed in or out, and whether or not your clips will display audio waveforms. I'm going to leave these settings alone, but you can change them however you like. Okay, so get into the editing tools, I'm going to load my clip into the timeline by dragging it down here. And I'm just going to click this button to hide the media library since I won't need it right now. For some of you, you may have no idea what any of these icons mean or do, so I'll explain what the purpose of each of these tools is with a bit of an overview of how to use them, starting with this one right here, which is what I call the Enhance tool. The Enhance tool is perfect for giving your clips some quick fixes and enhancements with just one click of a button. When you click the icon, the computer will analyze your clips, video, and audio qualities and make adjustments to volume, color, EQ, and other settings based on presets the computer has to compare your clips against. While this is a very effective and efficient tool, you really have no creative control over what your video looks and sounds like and the computer may not always make the best adjustments for you. Chances are you'd be better off making manual adjustments to your clips. For manual adjustments, we have tools like the color balance tool, which is very effective in making subtle but important edits to the video quality of your clips. When you click on this icon, you will notice there are four options, being Auto, Match Color, White Balance, and Skin Tone Balance. The first button, Auto, will allow the computer to make adjustments for the other three selections in this tool. Like the Enhance tool, this is a quick fix, but is not ideal in most situations. Instead, you have the option to edit these settings individually. Match Color will allow you to use an eyedrop tool to select a point on the timeline or another clip to match with. 
On the right hand side of the preview display, you will see the clip that the playhead is at, while the left hand side will display where in the timeline you are trying to color match with. Once you have found that point, left click on the timeline and click the blue arrow to keep the changes, or press X to cancel. Like I mentioned in my previous video, this is effective if you have multiple clips to color grade at once. The white balance function of this tool is probably the most important to know about since it is often ignored. You can change your white balance settings right on your camera too, but in case you didn't or you don't know what white balance is, this tool allows you to quickly make the edit that will help you make your clips stand out. This tool basically lets iMovie know what color white is, so it has a reference point to display the colors in your clip as accurately as possible. Different sources of light can make your clips seem warm or cool, and although you can't change the light in your clip, you can make adjustments in post-production to keep your colors as true as possible. All you have to do to set the white balance in iMovie is click on a white area in your shot that you want to use as a reference. And again, if you want to keep these changes, click on the blue arrow, and if you want to cancel them, just click on the X. Now, skin tone balance has the same functionality for skin tones, but since I have no people in this clip, there's no need for me to make any adjustments, so I'm just going to skip over that. The next tool over is the color correction tool, which has three sliders allowing you to adjust exposure, contrast, color, and temperature. I have a full in-depth tutorial on how to use this tool to color grade your clips, so I'll leave the link in the description below if you want more information on that. Now, these next tools are pretty simple, so I'm going to go over them quickly for the sake of time, but I'll try to make a few videos showing you some creative ways to use them. The crop tool provides you with only three styles to crop your footage. You can fit it to the full parameters of the screen, or you can choose the crop to fill, or to use the Ken Burns effect. Crop to fill will fill the screen with an area of the clip you choose, but be careful not to crop it too much or you will lose video quality. The Ken Burns effect crop has the same abilities as crop to fill, but it allows you to choose a start and end point to simulate a moving screen or zoom effect. Unfortunately, you can't keyframe the start and end point on the timeline, so the duration of the Ken Burns effect depends on the length of your clip. The crop tool also gives you the selection to rotate your clip clockwise or counterclockwise just in case your clip is upside down or for some other reason. The speed tool, which is indicated by the stopwatch icon, can allow you to make your clips slower or faster. When you click the drop down menu, you will notice a few options. By choosing slow or fast, you can slow down or speed up your clips by a certain percentage or number of times. The freeze frame option will create the effect of a still image in your footage. You can choose to also have your clip play in reverse. It's good to note that when you change the speed of your clip, your audio may become distorted. You can try to preserve the audio by clicking the preserve pitch button when the option is available. However, your audio will still most likely be distorted slightly or out of sync. So I usually just mute it altogether. If you know the frame rate you shot your footage at, you can use the custom selection in the drop down menu to adjust the speed of your clips to help you get that cinematic look or some other type of effect. For example, if you shot at 60 frames per second, you may want to reduce your clip speed to about 50% or less so that your footage will appear to be played at around 25 to 30 frames per second, which is around the range that most movies are shot at and where you will find that cinematic look. Next to the speed tool is an icon that, when clicked, will give you filters for your clip and audio effects. These filters are similar to what you would see on Instagram or Snapchat, giving your clip an interesting or fun look with just one click. The audio effects can change the pitch of your voice or modulate the audio in fun and interesting ways. This tool doesn't really add anything to your footage, but it can be used in vlog type edits or other videos. If you notice, there are still three more tools in the toolbar to cover. However, since I have to go a little more in depth with these, I'm going to split this video into two parts. In the second part, we will also finish going over the basics on iMovie, including how to add voiceovers, overlays, and to change the size of your preview displays. I also want to do a Q&A video answering any film or editing questions you guys have for me, so make sure to leave your questions in the comments below. Anyway guys, that's it for part one of iMovie Basics. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you thought the video wasn't enough or you want to see more advanced techniques in the iMovie, I have more videos coming every Thursday that will progressively get more advanced. So make sure to hit that bell next to the subscribe button to get notified when my new videos are up. 
that's all for today guys and have a great day